Hi, this is your World Geography lesson for September 25th, and we're going to be lecturing on pages 55 through 67. So we have a lot to cover today, so we'll get started. So today we're going to be talking about Central Asia. Um, this is the Muslim Republic. It's comparable to the Middle East in many ways. Islam's the main religion. There is a dry climate for much of the land. However, even though they're comparable, Central Asia is often unheard of, whereas the Middle East is frequently mentioned in media. So why would this be? Well, it has to do, of course, with the fact that the location of the two places are vastly different. Central Asia is landlocked and largely isolated from the rest of the world. So there you can see right there on the map where Central Asia is versus the Middle East, which is in this area, you can uh, see a strong contrast in location. So this area is landlocked for the most part by natural boundaries. So Central Asia consists of six republics. These are Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan. The first five of these belong to the Soviet Union until 1991, and Afghanistan never was annexed and drove the Soviet Union out. And of course, you know that in 1991, the Soviet Union uh, disbanded. So none of these nations are part of it now. It just has to do with their history. Communism, which of course would have come in thanks to Soviet Union Russia, Soviet Union, uh, has a, a, a strong sway over Central Asia. Here is a map you can see of the, the different, the six republics right here in this area um, and other uh, political entities obviously around it with China and Iran and other places, but we're focusing on uh, Central Asia. So the borders of Central Asia, as we just saw on that map, um, are going to include to the north Russia, to the east China, and to the south. Pakistan and India. So what is the climate and the topography like? Well, the climate is desert, for one. Um, there's two major wastelands in this area, uh, Karakum, which means black sand, and forgive my uh, pronunciation, uh, Kizilkum, which is red sand. And it also has steppe climate, as well as highland climate. Water resources in this area are limited, but it does have two large bodies of water, uh, the Caspian Sea and the Aral Sea. And you can see those two right in these two pictures there. Oh, wait, I should probably move back there. Um, Climate to topography, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. So the Caspian Sea is considered the world's largest lake or inland sea. Um, the two principal rivers of Central Asia are the Amu Darya and the Sir Darya, and both of these are uh, important to the area. Obviously, water is always important to whichever area it's, it's in. And it's important to recognize that these two rivers are very important partially because precipitation is very scarce in this area. So you would like to know where your water sources are. And because of the fact that uh, this, this area experiences greater extremes in temperature, um, this has to do with the fact that it's farther away from the ocean. So the climate is going to be uh, very different here versus what we're used to in our neck of the woods because we have a subhumid, um, a subtropical, a humid subtropical climate. So we, we would be shocked if we went there. Okay, let's talk about Kazakhstan. So Kazakhstan is the largest republic of Central Asia. It covers over a million square miles, and which makes it the first, fourth largest country in Asia after Russia and China and India. Uh, and if you look at them culturally, they have closer ties to Russia than to any of the Islamic nations. There, Kazakhstan is on the map. So this 
area of the world is diverse, and this has to do with immigration. The ethnic Kazakhs actually only make up about 40% of the population. Next to them are the Russians, and then their minorities are Germans, Ukrainians, and Slavs. Nearly half of the population follows Islam, and this would mostly be the Kazakhs. Russian Orthodox and Lutheran uh, denomination uh, are also present in um, Kazakhstan. The country was once nomadic, but now they are settled. The largest city here is Almaty, and the capital is Astana. The Germans and the Ukrainians and Slavs live in the rural villages, if you're looking at the breakup of people's locations, based upon their ethnicity, versus the Kazakhs, who live in cities. <clears throat> Kazakhstan has some positive industries as far as they do have uh, oil, coal, iron ore, and other metals. They actually have the largest oil deposits in the world and some of the largest gold fields. So they do have a lot of natural resources there. Two-thirds of the land is arid, but agriculture employs a large portion of the population anyway. Um, and they produce wheat and other cereals, potatoes, fruits, and vegetables there. And all of this, of course, is dependent upon their irrigation system, and they also have livestock, um, which is important to them. The land became heavily industrialized by the Soviets. Um, unfortunately, the Soviets handled the land poorly, and the Aral Sea actually shrank, and a lot of the land became uh, basically wastelands because of the fact that it was eastern Kazakhstan was used as a nuclear testing site. Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan both lie in deserts south of the Aral Sea, and they both have similar terrain, climates, and cultures. Turkmenistan ranges from the southeastern coast of the Caspian Sea to the Hindu Kush range and borders the mountains of northern Iran. Uzbekistan is landlocked and shares a border with every other Muslim republic in the region. And here we can see the two on a map, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, respectively. The Uzbeks and the Turkmen are of Turkish origin, but the majority of the people are Muslims. They were once nomadic, but they are mostly settled now, and um, most prefer rural villages to cities, however, so that's important to note, even though uh, a lot of the area is settled. The minorities there are Russians and various Turkish groups. In Turkmenistan, the largest cities are located in the south, including the capital, Ashgabat. In Uzbekistan, the population centers are um, mostly located mainly in the Fergana Valley and in the eastern highlands where Tashkent, the capital and largest city, is located. Here is a picture of Fergana Valley. As you can see, there is plant life there, and it's, uh, it's compared to a lot of the country, it's nice and lush. It used to be, Fergana Valley, used to be one of Central Asia's most densely populated regions due to the fertile soil and constant water supply from the Amu Darya River. The orchards there and the vineyards there thrive. They also have a very good silkworm industry there. And agriculture is vital to the economy of both these countries, despite the arid climate. Cotton is also grown there. And of course, we know cotton is used to make clothes. I think silkworms are so fascinating. So here's a couple of pictures to look at of silkworms. That's obviously the worm. That's what it becomes when it's a butterfly. And I believe or a moth, rather, <laughs> um, and this is the, the pupa stage. So Uzbekistan has the world's largest single gold mine. It also has uranium mines, and both Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan have oil and natural gases. They boast at high, oh, <laughs> excuse me, um, let's talk about Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan now. They both sit high in eastern mountains, Tajikistan is the smallest and highest of Central Asia's republics. It is located in Pamirs, which is about 10,000 feet above sea level. And Kyrgyzstan lies mostly in the Tian Shan Mountains, and both share a, China, uh, share a border with China. Here they are on the maps. 
Like most of Central Asia, the Kyrgyz speak a Turkic language, and the Tajiks trace their language and culture to Persia. And the dominant religion in both republics is Islam. Kyrgyzstan have moved farthest from communism and has banned the Communist Party. The capital of Kyrgyzstan is Bishkek, and the, the capital of Tajikistan is Dushanbe. Which, forgive my pronunciations, I've actually never heard these pronounced if I'm not pronouncing them correctly. Uh, they have a very simple agricultural life there. They have cotton and cereals that they uh, harvest, and they also um, focus on livestock. Okay, let's talk about Afghanistan. So Afghanistan is dominated by the Hindu Kush range, and this lies on the border of the Indian Peninsula at the western end of the Himalayas. After the Soviet Union uh, withdrew in, 18, uh, in 1989, um, the rival Islamic groups, the Mujahideen, waged war against Soviet Union puppet government. And finally, in 1992, they established a Sheikh coalition government under a prime minister. However, Afghanistan gets a negative look in history because after 9-11, Afghanistan harbored Osama bin Laden, and the Taliban would not surrender him, so the U.S. had to evade and topple the government. There is right there a picture of Afghanistan on the map. Uh, about half the population are Pashtuns, which means they speak a uh, Persian tongue, and over 99% are Muslims. Most of the Afghans dwell in rural villages and live as farmers and herdsmen. Some depend on trade. Kabul is the capital and largest city and has long been a uh, center of a caravan trade between Central Asia and India. Uh, there is strife in the government of Kabul due to ethnic tensions and communist domination. Afghanistan is actually one of the poorest countries in the world. It has not been industrialized. It's predominantly agrarian. And in the northern plains, chief, the chief crop is wheat. It possesses large deposits of natural gas and iron, but these have not really been utilized to the country's benefit. And the greatest challenge the country faces is modernization. So we're going to end the lecture there. Your turn has come. So what I would like for you to do is to please take section four of you on page 59 of your book and answer the questions and turn that in to me on Dropbox. Uh, thank you.